Hello, my name is Silvery. I'm excited to present our study on predicting system performance with machine learning. First of all, system performance prediction is important. With good prediction, one can improve system performance, picking the right hardware, and optimize cloud spending and so on. Performance prediction, simply put, is to discover the mapping between system parameters and performance. These parameters can be things like number of workers and input sizes, and the performance can be, for example, job completion time. So what are the challenges for performance prediction? First of all, the prediction needs to be accurate in order to be useful. It should be simple and easy to use, yet one can apply it without detailed knowledge of the system internals. Finally, we also want to have predictors that are general, meaning the approach or meta approach is going to apply to a wide range of applications and use cases. So given the promise and the success of machine learning in many domains, including ML for systems, it is natural to ask whether machine learning can help address these challenges simultaneously. And this is the question this paper sets out to answer. Well, there has been a growing body of works that apply machine learning to predict or optimize performance, and they report positive results. But notice that these efforts focus on specific use cases, applications, and models, so they don't fully answer our question of generality and ease of use. And in this project, we decide to take the first step filling this gap by doing a broad and systematic evaluation. So where do we start? As when people want to check whether something works or not, they will start from the best case under the simplest scenarios and see if it works. And this is what we did. We started from the best case setup. But first, let's be more specific about the prediction task. We're given a number of parameters, say P1 to PK, and we want to find the mapping between these parameters and some performance metric. A data set contains points with values for these parameters and the performance metric. These points will be split into two sets, one for training and the other for testing. Our best case setup has the following simplifying assumptions. We simplify the prediction task by doing prediction one feature or one configuration at a time. In reality, the historical runs of an application may include multiple parameters that are varying. We also allow the machine learning models to see data points of configuration to predict. In reality, these configurations are typically not available at prediction time. They should remain unseen. On the system side, we assume there are no contentions. We run on dedicated cloud instances that are not shared with other cloud tenants, and we run experiments in isolation. In reality, contentions can happen, and they may impact performance. Finally, we assume the input workloads are identical across runs, the same data sets, same queries, and so on. In reality, they may vary across runs. As we can see, these four are strong assumptions we make in order to simplify the prediction. So we expect the predict prediction accuracy to be very high under this best case setup. Having this setup in mind, we applied and run the best case test to a wide range of applications and models, including seven system frameworks, 13 application workloads, ranging from key value store, big data analytics, to model serving and web hosting. And we studied three common types of prediction, including varying number of workers, input sizes, and varying resource configurations. We pick six commonly used machine learning models from the simple nearest neighbors to more advanced neural networks, and we handle them with standard machine learning procedures. The predictors will take the values of these parameters to learn to predict the performance metric we are interested in. To evaluate these predictors, we pick a standard accuracy metric, RMSRE, and we take the best model's accuracy as the best of model error or bone error for short. Meanwhile, as a key to our methodology, we derive an oracle predictor from the equation of RMSRE that will find and use a value that minimizes the score as the predicted performance using the test set data. And we refer to this prediction error as O error. This O error gives a lower bound on the prediction error that any model could achieve. And hence, a high O error would suggest that Predicting performance is, in some sense, impossible. 
So these are our setup. We collect multiple runs and data points for each application and each parameter evaluated. So now let's see the results. We are going to present the prediction errors as CDFs. Each line represents the prediction accuracy of an application, and so as the line goes the closer to the top left, the better. Here are our best case results. First is the CDF of the prediction accuracy across the applications with the best of model. As we can see, even under the best case setup, even the best model fails to achieve high accuracy for many applications. Why? If we look at the Oracle, which produces the lower bound error, its accuracy is equally as bad. In fact, for 5 out of 13 applications, the O error can be higher than 15% for a substantial amount of predictions. This high error suggests that performance prediction can be hard for a non-trivial amount of applications, even with the Oracle predictor. This surprised us because all the applications and experiments were under the highly simplified settings. So following the best case methodology, we started with the best case assumption, but we see high Oracle errors already. Now what should we do? Let's try figuring out the root causes of these errors, and maybe we can fix them. We did our homework to find these root causes for each of the applications where Oracle errors are high. In total, we identified six root causes among the 13 applications we studied, including bimodal performance in Java Virtual Machine, randomization in scheduling, load balancing, DNS caching in cloud providers storage service, and so on. To get an idea of root causes, let's see an example in Spark. Briefly, to run an application or job, the Spark driver will request workers to run its executor program. And by default, Spark launches an application once at least 80% of the target worker nodes are ready. Because of this policy, the job might run with anywhere between 80 to 100% of workers depending on minor differences in launch times, and this can result in different job completion times. Knowing these root causes, but can we fix the system to adjust them? Indeed, it appears that once we identify the root causes, we can modify the applications to avoid them, such as simply disabling the optimizations. And here are how effective these fixes to prediction accuracy. Remember, this is still under the best case setup though. These are the Oracle errors we have seen before. After the fixes, all applications now have less than 10% of the old error for at least 90% of the predictions. Likewise, for the BOM error, we can see substantial improvements. And also BOM error tracks all error closely. Now that we see the fixes are effective, we should notice they introduce trade-offs. Namely, trade-offs between predictability and other design goals that are baked into the application by the developers. For example, disabling an optimization can lead to increased prediction accuracy, but at the cost of degrading the overall performance. Also, these fixes require in-depth understanding of the application as well as reasoning about the design trade-offs. So in these cases, machine learning fails to be an easy-to-use predictor. So here we propose another choice for the operators, that they can embrace the performance variability while keeping the performance optimizations available. The idea is, instead of predicting just a single value for performance, they can use machine learning models to predict performance as a distribution, and use the modes of the distribution as top k predicted values. One can, for example, use the top k to avoid configuration that violates some service level agreement. We did this by changing machine learning models. We applied mixture density networks, a variant of newer networks that produce probabilistic outputs, and we apply a similar idea to random forest to achieve the same. Our paper has more details on the results. In short, this approach substantially improves accuracy in many cases, but notice that there will be applications and use cases that we can't or don't want to use these probabilistic predictions. So to recap, we start from the best case setups. We run experiments and see Oracle errors are high. So we check whether we can find the root causes and modify the system, or we can switch to probabilistic predictions. Then, if the bone error in the best case is high, and for some reasons tuning machine learning models does not help, we have to give up. 
but so far everything has been under the best case assumptions. Now, what if we remove the best case assumptions? So here's how we go beyond the best case setup. We relax the four assumptions just described previously and repeat experiments on modified systems. Due to time limit, we will skip the detailed results here in the paper, but the high level finding is that there are performance trends hard to predict. So even when we forfeit the generality requirement and apply the system fixes, the bomb errors can still be high. How to address this will leave to future exploration. So here we complete our methodology with the beyond best case setup. And we believe this is a methodology blueprint that future works can follow when applying machine learning to performance prediction. Feel free to check our paper for how each of the applications we studied have fared in this blueprint. With these results and methodology in mind, here are our conclusions. First, it is common for applications to exhibit a high degree of irreducible error, and this limits the accuracy that any machine learning based predictor can achieve. Meanwhile, if we forfeit the requirements of simplicity and generality, we can significantly improve the accuracy either by doing root cause analysis and modifying the apps or modifying the predictions. But they don't work in all cases, especially as we move on to more realistic prediction scenarios. Overall, this suggests that we need a nuanced methodology for applying machine learning to performance prediction, as what we did in this work. Finally, going back to where we started, can machine learning offer predictions that are accurate, simple, and general at the same time? And our answer from this paper is no. With that, thank you for listening.